you should have seen us gunning Passing the folks along the road Just as they were standing All the lads and lasses there All the smiling faces Gunning along the Scots Road Welcome to the old Jody Geezer's daily summary of all things Newcastle United. So what's happening in Toonsville as we head for Christmas, top of the championship? Another three points keeps us top of the table, but I suspect that mixed in with that Yuletide euphoria, there's a little bit of disappointment that yet again, just like Wigan, we were less than commanding. Are we getting a bit cocky? Watching Atsu just stroll across to Diami to congratulate him after he scored. Made it look like it wasn't such a big thing. I think maybe we need a bit of an attitude adjustment. Years ago, a team called Wimbledon took the then first division by storm, playing their own rather agricultural version of the not so beautiful game. This involved hard tackling, long balls, and a rather unique way of uh, getting to grips with the opposition. Ask Gazza about that one. I remember the managers of the big teams at the time complaining, but that's not real football. Yet Wimbledon carried on winning games despite the golf in talent and the fact that they had a certain joke in here as their manager at the time. I think there have to be times when Rafa prepares for a game and takes a look at the opposition and thinks, what the hell are we going to do against this lot? It's important to remember not all battles are fought according to your rules. That's why the little teams do often cause us problems. It's almost as if they haven't learned to play properly yet. So. Is Shelby going to be taking a Christmas break as a result of his uh, racial slur? Personally, I think Tioli can still do a job for us. Okay, he hasn't got finesse, but this is a championship, and he hasn't got Shelby's vision, but who else in our team has? He just needs a calming Spanish hand on his shoulder. If nothing else, Rafa needs to get him into the showroom window to give other teams a chance to have a look at him before the transfer window comes along. <laughs> Can you imagine somebody coming along and trying to kick Tioli's tyres before the buy-in? Rafa is saying he wants to bring something more than just a bit of Christmas cheer to the club. Be careful, Rafa. We don't want you doing a Keegan. Avoid phrases like, bring it on, or I just love it. Because experience has shown us, they will bring it on, and you won't love it. A brilliant comment yesterday, remarking on the ballistic improvement that we've seen in Morty Army over the last few weeks. Don't know who said it, but... He's gone from Musa Sissoko to Messi in a week was just pure genius. The speculation that Graham Carr's rule at Newcastle is now over. The Chronicle asks, what now? Well, I'd suggest that at 72, it's time he sat back, put his feet up, grabbed a beer, confident in the knowledge that he's brought some amazing talent to our club. And before you lot start having a crack at Carr, and you will, just remember, it's the manager's job to get the best out of the players. And what have you lot bitched about with every single manager we've had since Graham Carr came in? The ingredients can be the best available in the market, but if the cook's not up to the job, then you knack it. I think it's pretty obvious now that rather than just having a cook on board, we've got a master chef. If there's one table we've never had any problem topping, it has to be the Injury League table in the Physio Room website. This time last year we had an entire first team part of in the Michael Owen Memorial Wing of the Treatment Centre. At the moment we have two. We have four players listed as doubtful, but at least they're in training and don't have bits hanging off them. So what's Rafa done that's different? Is it the rotation policy? Are they playing a lot less football? If you have any ideas, drop us a line below. Let us know what you think. I think somebody has to ask the question, how the hell did we end up wearing that bloody awful white and blue strip of Burton Albion? If the ref can't tell the difference between the magnificent black and white and a bunch of lads walking around in council jackets, then you have to ask the question, what's he doing out there? No wonder Burton did so well. It's one thing being intimidated by the mighty magpies, but you've got to fancy your chances when the opposition turn up looking like a team of hospital porters. What were we thinking? If I have one criticism of Ashley, it has to be the never-ending stream of away kits that keep turning up. It's almost as if he's trying to take advantage of the fans. We could get by easily with a single away strip, and all Ashley would have to do is maybe consider cutting the Sky Sports subscription for his helicopter. A mate of mine who's a Chelsea supporter told me years ago that watching our fans on the terraces convinced him that we don't actually have a second strip. With Newcastle United, it's either black and white or skins. Well, this has been the Al Jody Geezer's daily summary of all things Newcastle United. I spend my time going through the crap on the internet so you don't have to. Cheers, and turn off.